our sanctuary and other ministry throughout the week that we're a part of and have going on, and I'll explain that in a little bit. But again, welcome. Let's go ahead and open up with a word of prayer, ask that the Spirit of God will work and move in our hearts and lives, and then we'll begin with a, a, a worship song, and uh, we'll just continue to follow through with the rest of our morning worship service. Father, I thank you so much and praise you for this occasion that you've given us today to be here, to be in this place, to worship you and to glorify you and honor you for who you are. Father God, I thank you that we are able to meet together. Lord, we live in perilous times, but Father God, you are there walking hand in hand with us during these times. And I pray, Father God, that you would work and move, and that hearts would be challenged and, 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 and moved upon by you today, Father God, that we would be encouraged, built up in our faith, challenged by, by what you want to speak to our hearts today. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Worship team.
I could have just a little bit of my voice in the monitor just so that I know that I'm, I'm being heard out there. Um, thank you. Um, there are several ways that you can give your tithes and offerings to the church. This morning, as you, uh, many of you have already given as you've come in, as you go out, you can also, the, the offering plates are on the, the table in the back in the foyer as you're leaving. You can drop them there. Uh, for those of you who are online with this, you can go to... Uh, uh, www.chowfirst.com backslash give and you can give online just follow the instructions there and there's a lot of uh, there's two different options that you have there and also you can just come by during the week and drop your tithes and offerings off at the church Monday through Thursday from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. and or you can just mail it to our P.O. Box 248 Chowchilla, California uh, I, I just want again thank you so much for your faithfulness and giving to the Lord uh, so that his work can continue and to go forward in the days ahead. Um, as we move on, uh, just real quick here, uh, I just want, I, I don't think we have it up there yet. You just leave it there. Just leave it right there. Um, first of all, I just want to say thank you to the team that came and helped set up for the, uh, the, the family film night. On Friday night, we watched Courageous outside in the uh, playground area. Uh, very encouraging film and uh, just trying to create an atmosphere of fellowship where we can come together. Uh, right now it's starting to get a little cold. People are all covered up with their, uh, many of them brought their blankets and stuff like that. But it's been a way that we can fellowship together. And uh, we're so thankful that the Lord has given us that opportunity to do that. Um, I just want to mention that the County Health Department here in Madeira uh, said that on Tuesday they will be announcing uh, uh, providing all the numbers and statistics continue on the same way that they were this past week, they'll be announcing the move from purple to red. And so they said they had to go one more week, staying at the levels that they're at, and the levels are much, much below the actual levels that require us to remain in purple. Uh, in other words, anything seven or above, <coughs> we're, they, they told us that we were at 4.8. And so there's a, there's a toll, uh, there's, we'd have to really gain some heavy ground in order to remain in purple. And so I'm anticipating that we'll be free to uh, completely and totally, restaurants will be able to have meet inside, though, though, or uh, at least a certain percentage. And uh, my prayer is that we will drop those color levels to where we're completely free of any restrictions at all, and that this COVID uh, virus will be completely wiped out. Let's pray to that end. Wednesday morning is the women's prayer group at 9 a.m. Uh, that's going to be happening in the fellowship hall right behind us here. And we invite the women to come and to pray together, to believe God together, uh, to worship together. And uh, it's a time of fellowship and a time of mutual encouragement. Also on Wednesday evening, the Royal Rangers and Impact Girls Club will meet in their classrooms here in the uh, education wing of the church. And so, and that will start at 6.30. I just want to let you know, unless, uh, I think for the Royal Rangers, there's been a special arrangement made because they're going to be doing some activities outside and they'll be meeting earlier. Uh, but the rest of the program will meet at 6.30 p.m. And that will coincide also with the Wednesday night Bible study, which will also be open if you want to come. You're more than welcome to come and join us here for the Bible study. Uh, We'll continue to participate in following the protocols that we have here, taking your temperature, giving you an opportunity to use hand sanitizer, and also wearing your mask to your seat and then taking it off there if you so choose to. 
Um, Pastor Mikael will continue his teaching. Actually, this will be the last uh, Wednesday night Bible study where he'll be talking about the love for God and the fear of God. If you haven't had a chance to listen to that, and maybe you don't have access to the internet, we do have CDs that we make uh, every every week uh, that have the uh, Wednesday night, Sunday morning, and Sunday night services on them. And I tell you what, this last Wednesday night was wow. It was really, really good. And I want to encourage you, uh, if you haven't had a chance, talk to us and we'll get you a copy of that so that you can follow it. And this week, uh, he'll be concluding uh, his study on this subject, love for God and fear of God. Uh, also, next week, there's a special thing happening next Saturday. Do any of you know what's happening on Saturday? Now, I'm not talking about Halloween. <laughs> I'm not talking about Halloween. I'm talking about fall back, daylight savings time. So maybe some of you will show up in time for Sunday school next week if you don't push that clock back an hour. So uh, I remember one time showing up at the church uh, for Sunday school, and I'm like, where is everybody? Yeah, I was the pastor of the church, and I forgotten about the daylight savings time. Thankfully, it happened on the right time, and not me showing up just before worship service and missing Sunday school altogether. Anyhow, but uh, <clears throat> don't forget, next week is daylight savings time. I will also, I'm going to let you know regarding um, our services and moving forward. I'll, I'll send out another email. How many of you? How many of you are actually receiving the emails that I'm sending out? Now I send out texts too. Now the text this this time, I'm not sure if it was the reflection of the week before, prior to. I'm still trying to learn how to use the system that gets us the ability to send out multi multiple texts, and it may have been a copy of last week's text, which talked about the air quality. I don't know. If it didn't, that's fine. Uh, please, I. I Forgive me, I, I, when I looked on my phone, it said air quality, poor air quality. I said, no, that's not what I said in the text. And so basically, and sometimes the messages are repetitive because I'm using every avenue I can to make sure you're communicated with. And also, if you have access to Facebook, uh, I posted on Facebook what we're going to be doing as well. Uh, provided everything goes well this week and we drop into the red, we'll be opening up also Sunday night uh, worship services. So anyone who would like to, to attend will... Uh, have that opportunity to t attend uh, Sunday evening services. Again, wait until I send it out and say this is the new schedule, and then uh, you will know what is going on. So next week, also prepare your hearts for communion as we will be sharing communion together uh, next Sunday morning. That's all I have for the immediate announcements. So we're going to go back into a time of worship with the Lord, and uh, let's just uh, give him the praise that he rightly deserves.
Understanding means so be it. Lord, blessing, glory, honor, and power. And so be it unto you because you so rightly deserve our praise and our adoration. Can we just take a moment to praise the Lord? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We give you the glory that you so rightly deserve. Blessed be your name, Jesus. Uh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, be lifted up and glorified in this place. Spirit of the living God, move in our hearts and lives. May we rejoice and be thankful for all that you've done for us. Blessed be your name. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessing, honor, glory, and power. Hallelujah. 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 My sheep hear my voice. My sheep know my voice. And my sheep follow. Yes, God. I said that if you draw near to me, I will draw near to you. Yes. And I will never leave you. And I will never forsake you. And I always keep my word. Amen. Trust in my word. Rest in my word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe the Lord wants to speak to a heart today. Someone maybe following us online, maybe someone who's present here in this place. And he would say, don't get your eyes fixed on the circumstances surrounding you, but keep your eyes fixed on Jesus Christ. He would tell us to keep our eyes laser focused on Jesus Christ, trusting him and believing in him. 
to bring us through this circumstance and situation. You're allowing fear to grip your heart. Banish fear by placing your faith in Jesus and allow him to do his work in your heart and life and to build you up and strengthen you. Don't allow your circumstances to drag you down, but rather allow the Spirit of God in you to build you up so that you can overcome the obstacles that are in your way. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be your name, Jesus. You're worthy to be lifted up and praised and magnified. Do your work in our hearts and lives. Hallelujah. 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 This morning, as we go to the Lord in prayer, let's remember Brother Kenny Marsh. Uh, yesterday, he had a, a, a good day. Woke up this morning struggling with a fever and, uh, and uh, just not feeling well with a migraine headache. And for those of you who don't know, Brother Kenny Marsh has been in uh, some pretty heavy-duty treatment uh, for a cancer that he's been battling. Over this past week, he started on Monday with one treatment, then on Tuesday with a second treatment. And uh, we are thankful that all the potential side effects that were enumerated to him, that he has had very little side effects, and we're thankful for that. But he woke up this morning with these issues. Let's pray. The good news is that the, the, the tumor has begun to shrink. Uh, that he's been battling. We know that he, 85% of it had shrunk down to just about the size of a pistachio, just a little bit, not very big at all, right there in his neck. Uh, but it, it, over the months, has just been stubborn and has remained the same. So they've prescribed this treatment, and they're beginning to see that tumor begin to shrink. Let's pray and believe God that it will shrink, completely disappear. Amen? Let's pray that for him. Uh, Sister Juanita's cousin, Barbara, uh, needs us to continue praying for her for a complete and total healing. I received a good report again today that she is doing well, that God is working in her. And so, folks, we're going to continue to pray for her, that God would work and minister. Uh, she was diagnosed, uh, or she, I was told in the very beginning, seven, eight months ago, that she was at uh, level four cancer. And uh, so it is so good to hear, because they weren't giving her much time, from what I understand. But God is able to heal. God is able to heal. And so we're going to continue believing for Barbara that God will touch her. Uh, let's pray for Sister Tammy Baker. She may be joining us this morning. I'm not sure. But she is requesting prayer for her knee. Uh, she has, I think it's her left knee. Is that right, Sister? Uh, I'm not sure. Her right knee. Her right knee. Thank you. Her right knee is uh, causing her some major issues. Let's pray for her. Um, let's also pray for uh, Brother Kenny. And Sister Esther's uh, daughter-in-law, Nicole, she is still in a semi-coma, and she needs the power of God to manifest himself in, on her behalf. Had a chance this last week to see some pictures, uh, a beautiful young lady and, and her husband and, and their daughter, and, and I'm just thinking, God, do something there. You know, the, she's, she's not that old. She, I, I'm assuming that she's somewhere in her 40s, right, 46, right, right there. And, and uh, uh, she fell, had a seizure, fell, hit her head, and has been in in a semi-comatose state since that time. She's still responding to stimulus and all that stuff, but we just need to pray for her. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not tired of praying for her. What I'm tired of is that she remains sick, that she remains incapacitated. And let's just believe God. Can we do that today in faith? Believe God to work and move in that situation. Uh, let's not forget to pray, as I've already mentioned it, for Madeira County to pass into the red, but I'd like to see it go all the way down into the white. You know, no more colors, just being able to completely amen let's pray for that we can believe that we can believe that and it's my prayer that also for our congregation that god will place his hedge of protection about us physically in our physical bodies as well as our spirit men uh, our inner man and asking god to work in our our lives let's pray also for our country right now as we are facing this national election in november uh just a a, a little short week away uh just a, a little over eight days and we're going to be voting you know, our responsibilities as Christian is to vote for those who will uphold biblical values and for propositions and laws that will also do the same. And that's what we're hoping and praying and we're believing God for. So let's vote in that direction. Let's, let's uh, seize upon the opportunity that God has given us in this free country to vote. There are a lot of countries in the world today where the votes don't count or they don't even have votes. It's just dictatorships and they decide for the people uh, what they do, what they uh, can do and not do, and 
and it's on the whim of the moment and the circumstance. And I'm so thankful to God for the country that we live in, that we have the freedoms that we have. Yes, we have issues, but there is no country on the world that doesn't have issues. But I, I can guarantee you this, that I'm glad that I'm in good old U.S. of A. I am so thankful for our country. So let's pray for this election that God would work and move and that his will would be accomplished and that, uh, uh, that God would also give us peace, peace in our hearts as well as in our country. We definitely need that. So let's go to the Lord in prayer and just believe God to work and to move in these requests. Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus, thanking you and praising you for this day, asking that your Holy Spirit would work and move in our hearts and lives. God, you know every single one of our needs. You know every single one of our heart's desires. And God, I pray that in the name of Jesus, you would help us to keep our eyes focused on you, trusting you and believing you, depending upon you to accomplish what you desire to accomplish in each of our lives. Lord, help us to trust you to meet our needs. And Father God, help us to follow you in the area of our desires. And oftentimes, Father God, it's as we grow in relationship with you that you plant desires in our heart. And those desires are the ones that you will accomplish in and through us. And God, so I pray that in the name of Jesus, you would do your work in each individual's life that is listening in, that is here present in this sanctuary for your glory and for your honor. Father God, I pray for Brother Kenny. Lord, we've been praying for him and believing we've seen uh, tremendous things happen. I thank you for the medical technology that is there to enable uh, uh, him to, to, to enter into this healing process. And Father God, now he's in this uh, radical treatment that's going on. And God, I pray that your Holy Spirit would envelop him that you would be with him and father god that you would heal him completely and totally in jesus name in jesus name and lord i pray that your holy spirit would work uh, lord and give him confidence to keep his eyes focused on you god that there would the side effects would be minimalized completely and totally and god that you would manifest be with him today may this migraine in the name of jesus disappear and father god may this temperature descend lord to normal temperature in jesus name be with him today i ask and pray be with uh sister esta his wife father god strengthen her build her up in her faith father god believing you to continue to do your work in her husband's life and father god i pray that your holy spirit would continue to work and to move likewise in barbara's life we thank you father god for the way that you have worked in her and have we as we have heard these good reports god about the cancer receding in her body i pray that it will continue to the point to where it disappears and father god she'll go into remission until she sees you face to face whether it be through the the pathway of death at a good old age or father god whether it be that you we, uh, that Barbara hears the trumpet sound. <laughs> and Father God, she's caught up uh, uh, with the rest of us into heaven. God, do your work in Barbara's life, I ask and pray. Father, I pray likewise for our sister uh, Tammy, Father God, who's been struggling with her knees. I pray, God, that in the name of Jesus, you would manifest yourself on, on her behalf and that you would bring healing and health to our sister in Jesus' name. I know that you're able to do it, and I ask that you would. And Father God, I pray likewise for Brother Kenny's daughter-in-law brother kenny and sister Esther's daughter-in-law nicole this young lady father god that needs your holy spirit to work and to move in her physical body and to bring a complete and total deliverance father god uh lord you're able to correct uh, anything that's been damaged in her brain as a result of the seizure and 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 the fall that she experienced and god i pray that in the name of jesus if if there's something that's disconnected in her brain i pray oh god that it would reconnect and father god that in the name of jesus if there was any part of her brain that was damaged that it would be healed and restored in jesus name father Oh, it's by your stripes that we are healed, Father God, and we claim your word, and we believe your word, and we ask that you would move for your glory and for your honor. Thank you, Father God. Lord, you've seen all that we've gone through over the last seven and a half to eight months, Father God, with this COVID virus, Lord. And God, I pray that in the name of Jesus, Lord, that the cases would plummet here in Madera County and throughout the state of California, Father God, and that this virus would be vanquished in jesus name we know that you're able to do it and we ask that you would help us to have faith in you and not live in fear but live in faith believing you father god to accomplish your will your way and lord i pray that you would manifest yourself that here in madeira county god it wouldn't just be into the red but lord we begin to see it drop rapidly 
O oh God, to where we're able to have complete and total freedom of movement, Father God, without having all these restrictions that have been placed upon us by our government. God, do your work in Jesus' name. Lord, you know, your word tells us that you put people into power. Father God, it's you that raises up kings and dispo de deposes them. Father God, it is my prayer that in the name of Jesus, you would work and move in this election cycle that we're in right now. God, in just eight days, there's going to be this election that's going to take place. And Father God, I know a lot of us are concerned about this. Lord, we, we see what's going on in our nation. We see, Father God, uh, all this infighting. And Father God, all this, all this uh, unrest that is here. And God, I pray that in the name of Jesus, your Holy Spirit would work and move. That the man that you have chosen will be elected to office, Father God. And the people that you have chosen will be elected to the Senate and to the House of Representatives. Lord, nationally at the federal level. And then, Father God, in each race locally, Lord, that the people that are running for office that you desire to be in place, Father God, I pray that you would put them there. And God, help us as your children to live up to our responsibility that you've given us, Father God, a privilege that you've given us to live in this nation and to live up to our civic responsibility to vote, Father God, for those values which best reflect your word. Father, thank you for who you are. May your Holy Spirit work and move in Jesus' name. Oh God, how we need you. How we need your spirit to work in us. And God, may you bring peace. Peace in our hearts and peace in our nation. In Jesus' precious name, amen and amen. Amen. All right. We'll continue believing God and praying in this way that His Spirit would work and move in our hearts and lives. Today we have a special occasion, and we are thankful that the Lord uh, has given us an opportunity in our church over the years to have a Royal Rangers program. Today we're going to be highlighting Royal Rangers, and uh, I'm going to ask the brother who's in the back to come forward, if you would. Uh, find a place up here on the, on the front row. We're so glad that you're with us today. I am not going to lead this time. I'm going to ask the Royal Ranger commander, leader that we have in our church, Brother Randall uh, Crawford, to come at this time, if you would. And uh, he is going to share some of the things that are going on. Okay. I'd like uh, Brother uh, Chad to come up, and uh, he has a ward for our church. And I'd like him to come up and present it. Greetings from Atwater, everybody. Thank you for supporting and sponsoring the Royal Ranger ministry here at your church in Chowchilla, and we're so thankful for that. Uh, we have five out active outposts in the Shoshone section, the uh, South San Joaquin section that encompasses Merced and Madera County. And uh, I wanted to make sure that all the churches were chartered within a timely fashion, so we had a little incentive this year. And uh, I don't know if you're aware of this, but Royal Rangers is all over the world. Are you aware of that? Through Royal Rangers International. And Royal Rangers International has a, a new... Okay, I'm a high school band director, and so I do not need a microphone. Uh, but anyway, uh, Royal Rangers International is uh, trying to reach 10,000 new boys and men uh, in the Eurasia uh, uh, area, specifically India, Bangladesh, uh, Sri Lanka, and there are two other countries. Uh, but 
they were selling these beautiful necklaces to raise uh, some funds. And so I told the, uh, the churches uh, in this section, I told those who are in this section uh, that the first church to uh, charter would be earning this beautiful uh, uh, necklace. And so I would like to present this Ignite Eurasia FCF uh, necklace to your senior commander, Commander Randall Crawford. Thank you, sir. And uh, furthermore, uh, we decided to match the funds that you paid for your national charter, and those funds are going to be sent to uh, Royal Ranger International. So that's a, this is a double bonus here. And so this church is actually going to be reaching, teaching, and keeping boys for Christ in your age. And I just want to thank you again for uh, uh, sponsoring and supporting Royal Rangers uh, in your church. I want you to know, I'm sure you all agree with this, but there's some that do not. Some would say Royal Rangers is a little too old-fashioned for 2020. Well, I'm here to tell you, with our boys under assault today, Royal Rangers ministry is more important today than ever before. And I just want to thank you for that. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. There you go. Is this on? Royal Rangers, what we have is a, uh, it's called FCF, Frontiersman Camping Fellowship. And it's for the boys to have something more elite to do and to teach them things to, uh, I don't know, above and beyond what our basic Royal Rangers are. So uh, to our, um, our symbol is a fire, and it stands for the warmth of Christian love the light of personal witness, and the usefulness of dedicated service. And I have one other boy here. He's going to come up and read the motto to us of this, of this group. Hello. Um, I will be reading the motto of FCF. I share with you the, the warmth and glow of this campfire. These crimson flames are a symbol of our fellowship and adventures in, camp, in camping. I promise to share with you the warmth of Christian friendship and with others the light of my Christian testimony. I promise to keep alive the spirit of FCF in my personal life and to observe at all times the principles of Royal Rangers. No. So now we are, we have two new FCF members. They are new mountain men to our section. Boys, would you come up? We have Larry. He is now a mountain man. And we have Mason, who is now a mountain man for our church, to represent our church in our section, in our district. These are our, turn around. These are our new boys that are mountain men. That's the first level that they have to achieve, and they have two more levels to achieve. Next will be Buckskin, where they will get their name and um, earn more, and they er get their outfits going, and they start on their outfits. And... It just, and then the next level is wilderness where they learn a little bit more as an adult about spiritual uh, things and of the mountain man. Okay. Thank you, boys. I'd also, I'd also like two com commanders to come up here, uh, Brother uh, Rick and Brother um, <laughs> Blake. Blake. I know that. I just, I had it in my head to come up here. So anyway, Brother Rick, this is for Outpost, for being an outstanding leader in our Outpost, and uh, that is for you to wear on your uniform because of all your dedication, all your training, and all the stuff that you've achieved to earn that badge. 
not a given badge, it's an earned badge. Blake, as a district, as a, as a representative of our district, as a district officer, I also want to hand you this. This is um, the Outpost Command Senior Commander's Award for your dedication of service, your training, and um, everything that comes with it. That is for you to wear on your uniform. Be proud of it, because you earned it. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Now we've talked about a fire, and what we try to instill in these boys is not just a physical fire, but a fire within you. The love and the warmth and the glow of Christian love is a fire that's built in their heart. It's not necessarily, even though we do we represent it with a physical fire, it's also a fire that we build up in our boys as they grow. And that is what Royal Rangers FCF is about. Now, let me see if I can. This is getting hot. He's dead. He won't mind. So anyway, um, the early mountain man explored new wildernesses and endured gr uh, great hardships. We try to instill that in our boys. There was a man named Jim Bridger. He got in a fight with a bear, a grizzly bear, pulled out his knife, and he killed the bear with his knife. Then he sat down on a log, or a rock, or something, and he sewed himself up from his right earlobe to his left eyebrow. And that's not with a surgical needle. That's with a bone needle and sinew. And he sat there and did that because he knew his life depended on it, and he had to get it done. So he did that. Now, as Christians, us, what are we in our lives ready to face the hardships? Are we willing to sew ourselves up, no matter how painful, and keep going? What if tomorrow they piled our Bibles up and started burning them and said, they're, in, they're not politically correct, politically correct that these Bibles got to go. As Christians, how would we fight that bear? What would we do as Christians? You know, we say, well, they would never do that. Yeah, and they would never destroy our economy. And they would never be rioting in our streets. And they would never tell us we can't meet in our church building. No, they would never do that. How easy could that be to be done to us? Are we ready for a battle? Are we ready to fight Satan? Are we ready for that? You know, Satan isn't just going to leave us alone. That's not going to happen. Satan's after us. What happens to water when it sets still for a long period of time. It gets stagnant. Now, as Christians, it's still water. As Christians, if we get stagnant, we're still Christians. But can we bring life to other people? Can we share life? Can we do good? No. We're stagnant. So ask yourself, are you a stagnant Christian? Or are you on fire and showing life? Are you, is a church, is the church a stagnant church? Our church, other churches, there's a lot of churches. Are we a stagnant church? Or, are the church, or is the church on fire? The church is a hospital for the sinners. It's not a clubhouse for the saints. 
You know, it's not, it's not we. Where are our sinners? Why aren't they in here getting healed? Why is it always the same people in church? If we're not stagnant, where's our water going? What are we doing with our lives? Satan is wasting our lives and keeping us from winning the world. The mountain man had a short season. It was very short. It only lasted about 15 years till the beaver was trapped out and the beaver pelts were no longer needed. They started going to silk. But the mountain man still kept, you know, he was still useful for other things, but not for his main purpose. As, as Christians, we have a short lifespan. God's coming back. Say 50 years even. What, how much time does that give us to win souls? In your lifetime, you get up, you grow up, you get, you know, by the time you learn how to start saving souls and stuff, you're in your teens, if not more. By the time you get in your 70s or so, you're a prayer warrior. You don't only have but a few years there to get out and save and, and, and get Christians. We're limited to a short lifespan. Our lifespan is not very long. What did you do with your lifespan? It doesn't matter if you played football. It doesn't matter if you played basketball. It doesn't matter what you did with your life if it wasn't saving souls. That's all God cares about is saving souls. That is our life's goal is to save souls, to get sinners into this church, to get sinners healed, to get sinners on the right path so that they can go out. In John 4, 35, and the world is ripe for harvest. Talks about that. The world is ripe for harvest right now. Where's our harvest? Why aren't we harvesting? What are we doing? You know, it, I'm not, I'm stepping on my toes as much as I step on anybody else's. I'm probably throwing bricks at my toes because I haven't doing, been doing any more than the next pen. And I'm, I'm sorry for that. Sorry to God for that. 1 Peter 5.8. Be sober because you're, and be diligent because your adversary, Satan, He's our adversary. He's our enemy. Is roaring like is is roaming like a lion. And now over there would be a lion. Here would be a bear, top of the food chain. Talking about bears. He is like the meanest, baddest bear there is out there. He will tear us up from limb to limb if we let him. But what we got to do is pull out our knife and fight him. You know, we got knives. The mountain men had knives. We got knives. Because our war, our war is spiritual. Our war is not physical. It's not a physical bear we're after. It's a spiritual bear. It's Satan. And we got to fight him with our knife. And he gives us plenty of weaponry right here to fight him. And we have to fight him. If the boys get together and we say, hey guys, let's go sit around the fire and let's sing. And all my boys gather around the fire pit. And we look at that fire pit. We look at that wood. We look at that fire pit. We look at that wood. Does that start a fire? No. We come to church. We sit in the pew. We look at the pastor. We look at the altar. We look at the pastor. We look at the altar. Does that start a fire? You have to start the fire. God does not start the fire for you. He gives you the stuff to start it with. He gives you the kindling. He gives you the wood. These boys, they have to get down and get the wood, get the kindling, and start a fire if they want fire. If you want fire in your life, you got to come down here and get it started. It ain't just going to happen. Say, the pastor doesn't start the fire. 
The pastor gives us some kindling, gives us some wood every week, but we got to take it and put it on the fire. If we don't take it and put it on the fire, it does us no good. A stack of wood does no good. A burning barrel does no good if you don't start the fire. And that's within all of you to start a fire in yourself. And for me, to start a fire in myself. And this is the last days, and we better get on fire. And we are responsible for keeping it burning. And we were responsible for not letting it go out and not letting anything put it out. We are responsible for our own lives on our own fire. I can't start your fire. I can't start your fire. I can't start your fire. Only you can start your fire. I can only start my fire. I'm responsible for my fire. You know, we say, oh, God will take care of it. God's in control. Okay, yeah, God, he's in control. Yeah, God can take care of it. But he uses you to do it. He doesn't take care of it supernaturally. He takes care of it using you. If someone gets healed, it's because someone else prayed over him. It's because someone else had the faith. When Peter walked up and healed the blind man, the blind man didn't know nothing about God. The blind man didn't know nothing about the Bible. The blind man didn't know nothing about the Spirit. Peter did. If you want people saved, get your fire started and pray for people. It had nothing to do with, well, they wasn't right with God, and that's why they didn't get, they didn't let something go, and that's probably why they didn't get that. Or they did it ain't they, it's us. It's us. I'm sorry, I'm getting a little emotional, but... You know, he, he gives us lots of tools to keep our fire going. He gives us tongues. We got a log of intercessory prayer. We got logs of personal witness. He gives us logs of fasting. We got a lot of fuel that we can build on. But you got to build on it. You can't get a log and build your fire up for fasting if you don't fast. If you don't witness, you can't get fuel to put on your fire for witnessing. If you don't witness, you have to get fuel and keep your fire going. You have to get the fire within you going. I'm not a long-winded person, but... Just coming to church does not keep your fire going. Just listening to the pastor does not put fuel in your fire. Jude one twenty. But ye, beloved, build up yourselves in the most holy faith by praying in the Holy Ghost. How many of you used your tongues lately to start your fire? That's what will start a fire. You get down here on your knees and start praying in tongues, and you'll start firing, and you start getting fire, and you start getting fire, and the fire builds, and the fire builds. Fire ain't giant all at once. You have to start it and build it, and then it gets bigger, and it gets bigger, and it gets bigger. But you have to start it. Acts 2, 1 through 4. On the day of Pentecost... The Holy Ghost came down like fire and landed on their heads like fire. But they got in that room and they prayed and they prayed and they didn't give up and they prayed and then God sent them fire. But that's because they did the work and they started that fire and they got a fire going. Fire, as I teach my boys, has three elements. You have the fuel, you have the oxygen, you have the heat. If you eliminate any one of those, you don't have fire. You have to have those three things to have fire. 
you have to have something to burn, you have to have oxygen, and you have to have heat coming out of it. Now, the light from the fire is a byproduct, but if you don't have light, then there ain't a fire behind it giving it light. So I'd say your fuel is prayer. And with prayer, you've got God. He's your oxygen. And the heat is the love in your life. Now, if you pray and start a fire with God, there will be love coming out of you that people can sense. And when they see it and see the light in your life, they know you're on fire. Does that make sense? That's science related to spiritual. You have to have those elements if you want to be on fire. You have to do that if you want to be on fire. To have a personal witness, you have to be on fire. In Romans 12, 1 and 2, God asks us to be a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. Now think about that. And a sacrifice. You're a sacrifice to God. God wants you to be a sacrifice to him. What does a sacrifice have to be? It has to be burning. If you don't take a sacrifice and you lay it on the altar, and it's not on fire, what is it? It's just a dead carcass laying on the altar. You come up to the altar and you're not on fire. You're just a dead carcass laying on the altar. Get yourselves on fire. Be a living sacrifice to God. Be on fire for God. Show him that you love him and that you'll do whatever it takes. And we're not going to let Satan beat us down. But do it with a little enthusiasm. Do it with a little fire. Christians today are lacking in that fire. Not necessarily individual Christians, but as a whole, the Christian community is lacking, especially in, in America, in that fire. We haven't been tested. We haven't been, we've been, it's been too easy for us. Let's get on fire and push back on Satan. We're not going to let him take our buildings. We're not going to let him take our Bibles. We're not going to let him, because we're on fire. We're going to show him we're on fire. Everyone says right now that the Democrats, they're just tearing our country apart. And I'm probably one of the worst in that category. But as I wrote this and studied this, I thought, but that's not true. The Democrats are human beings. They're just people. Satan is the one behind all that. Satan is using them to tear our country apart. Satan is tearing this country apart because he knows it's a godly country. He don't want this country. It's an insult to him. He wants to tear it apart, and he's doing a pretty good job of it. So we need to get on fire and not let him do it. Because if we stand together as Christians and show our fire and our strength, so them Democrats might realize, I want to be saved because I want to go to heaven and we might save some souls. Just because they're Democrats, don't make them something else. It makes them human beings. God created them just like he created the Republicans. It's just people. Republican, Democrat is something that people created to separate. But we're still all just people. We still all need to make it to heaven. Everybody needs to make it to heaven. The sinner on the cross needed to make it to heaven. You know, it, it, we got to think differently. We got to think we're not in battle with that. We're in battle with Satan. So it, what I really want to say, I guess I'm pretty close to the end here, is as Christians, we need to get down and we need to get our fires burning hard, not just smoldering, burning hard and get together and start a forest fire, a Christian forest fire.
Look at that California burn. And it takes out buildings, it takes out everything, right? That fire burnt California. Well, as Christians, if we got a fire burning, maybe we would burn sinners into accepting God and catch them on fire for God. It's a good fire. We need to get together as Christians and quit worrying about assembly of God, you know, or Baptist or all this, and think we are children of God and we are on fire. And we will not let them smash our rights. We are strong. We have to show people what we really are. We, Satan's got our heads on mass and on on setting apart and all that. We're so concentrating on that that we're forgetting to get people saved. He's wasting our time and he knows there's just a little bit of time. And if he can get us to waste our time, he wins. He's stalling at the end of the game right now, people. Play hard. He's stalling at the end of the game because he wants to try to win. We got to play hard. We got to be on fire, fire, fire. Hellfire is unleashed all over. And if we as Christians don't fight fire with fire, we're going to lose. We've got to fight it with fire. So you people at home, if you've got a room somewhere that you can get private, go talk to God. Go get on fire. Go ask God, say, Lord... Set me on fire for you. Be on my fire for you. And I, Pastor, if you'd come down with me in front here. If there's anybody here, I'll pray, Pastor will pray. Just pray that God would put you on fire for him. Don't be a stagnant Christian. I know not some of us don't like to hear that. And I'm not saying that. I'm not pointing fingers. I'm just saying... Build your fire. Don't come down here to be saved, be healed or any of that. Come down here for God to build your fire and help you be stronger and a better Christian and not let Satan win. That's all I'm asking. And use your tongues because that builds fire fast. <laughs> Oh, no, 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 no,